Hello. Um, today we're going to look at how to use fonts. Here we go. So what I have in front of you is an image of um, Cronin Field, kind of a pretty HDR image, a little bit overdone there. I don't know why I just selected everything. So let's deselect that. So if you want to put text in, which you need to do for this upcoming assignment, you'll want to down to, believe it or not, the horizontal type tool. Ooh. Or you can click T e for short. Then, it's as simple as making a box, typing in some font, so Cronin field. And then if you notice, that doesn't appear because somewhere up here, something's wrong. So for instance, here, mine's way too big. I'm going to bring that down. And look, now we found it. At 11 point, it shows up. If I just click into the size box up here, I can just hold the up or down arrow and make that bigger or smaller. We're just going to make it, um, you know, functionally big. And it's green, which is kind of nice right now. But notice, um, if we take a look at that, um, it doesn't stand out really well. It's kind of hard to see, especially if you were to have it over the green or something. And you've probably seen that before in, you know, bad posters and things of that nature. Um, what we do is we utilize the layer it's on. Notice it renames it Cronin Field, and it shows that it's uh, a text area. So under Cronin Field, if I ever want to edit that, I can go back to the T, as long as I'm on the right layer, and click back in that box. And now I can make edit. Of course, if I want to change the font style, okay, what type it is, I can go up here and click up and down. Maybe I want to make something more bold or more sophisticated um, or something more spread out or whatnot. So there's a lot of options there. But as I go through, I just need to land on one. So we'll do one that uh, kind of works here. So we'll go with this one. Uh, nar narcism. Is that narcism? Ooh, narcism. Ooh. Anyway, now that we have Narcsim selected, we can do a couple other things. By holding down Alt and clicking the right or left arrows, you can spread it out or make it thinner. So again, I'm holding Alt and I'm clicking the left and right arrows. That's one option. The other thing we can do is if we want to affect what's in this box, Highlighted on my text layer, I can go down here and click this FX button. And it gives me all these options. If I want to choose, for instance, a drop shadow, I click on drop shadow. And notice it gives me more options. Right now, you can see that it actually applied a drop shadow behind Cronin Field. If you don't believe me, watch this while I click this. Ooh, gone. There again. Gone. There again. All right. Now I can affect all sorts of things. So this is the distance from that. If you want to make it stand out further, which is kind of fun, especially in an HDR picture. If I want to do more spread, okay, notice that solidifies the spread. So it looks like a really sharp light is touching it. And then, of course, the size. And then it doesn't even look like a drop shadow. Okay. But you can affect all those things however you want. Similarly, you can also rotate the angle. So depending on where the sun is, if you imagine it that way, um, it would affect where the shadow is. I can rotate my opacity. So if I don't want a really bold shadow, I can reduce the opacity there. And I have a lot of other options. So if I don't want to do a drop shadow, I can do an outer glow, which looks like that. Notice if you're on drop shadow, but you've selected outer glow, it looks like you don't have any options but that's because you need to highlight the outer glow in blue. And then you have a ton of options. I can also do a pattern overlay, which gives you kind of a pattern that goes into the text. So for instance, I could do that one. Ooh, or that, or that, or that. Or you can uh, create your own uh, pattern and put that in there. I've never used pattern overlay, but some people do. You can do a gradient overlay. This one's popular because um, it just kind of makes the... The letters, I think, look a little more dynamic, sometimes mysterious, all sorts of options there. There's the bell. You can do a color overlay. 
which is fun. You can do satin. You can do an inner glow, an inner shadow, a stroke. Um, strokes often is the best, especially if you want it to stand out, because then you can fold in the stroke, and it's really clear now that it says Cronin Field, or I can reduce the stroke as well. Um, I can also make it an interior stroke or center. So again, depending on what look you want to go for, those are all great options. Again, you can also do multiple at the same time. So I could do a drop shadow and a stroke. So that might be one that's popular, for instance. That's about it. Say OK. And then you can move it around, fill just like any image. Um, and it shows what effects you've applied. So that's the basics of text. Um, of course, with text, you can do anything that you can do with any other image. So I could put a, a mask on it, for instance, and use my brush tool and, you know, get rid of the O here, which I don't know why you would. Um, but, you know, that could be kind of fun, too. Uh, you can say things like, you can do things like in CR, in field, if that meant something. That'd be fun, I bet, if it meant something. In fed. Anyway, um, you can do whatever you want, just like most image files. So it's pretty cool. And again, if you, if you reorder the structure of your layers, you can put things above or below. Kind of whatever you want. So on this first project on making a sports poster, um, you're going to want to use this skill, uh, and you're going to want to play with around with text and see what um, what you want it to look like because the different texts give kind of a different uh, tone to what you're working on. So for example, kind of going back to uh, these examples on Canvas, if you look at these, this is a much more bold look. SC obviously they're using their logo. Um, this is much less pronounced, this meet the team, than certainly this old Miss football, are you ready? So uh, this might be more subtle, and it uses the players to uh, kind of uh, give voice to the image. And there's Jesuit alum Liz Brenner, by the way. Um, this one's from a student, um, and she used the texture on that font um, and made it very font heavy. Um, similar choice with this one. Uh, which is a nice poster and then it's illustrating uh, especially women's cross country here and we run Jesuit's a clever name uh, and a good use of font to make that central and stand out in the image. Um, if you have a lot of options, uh, make sure you Google um, some sports posters and get a good sense of what you want it to look like. Think about what your strategy is for um, what you're doing. All right, good luck.